ones that was hating won't jump on the track. Wondering if grandma is resting every show I'm bringing up back. Vocal Radio 91.1 FM, Chicago's only urban alternative, Nudia in the afternoon here with you. We have a special guest in the studio with us, Roy Kinsey. Hello. Hello, what's up? How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. You know, the funny thing is, before you were coming in, because I know we have a bunch of your music in the system. I was looking. We have music from 2013 from you mm-hmm. in here. Like, we have so much music. Like, I mean, that's so many years ago. Yeah. that It's really crazy. I feel like you've been a friend of Vocalo for a very long time. I have. Vocalo has been supporting me in a, in a big way for a long time. That's, you know, stuff from my first album. Yeah. You know, Jesse Menendez was a really really big supporter of mine and would bring me up um in the in the early days of like keep the receipts uh rookie of the year you know my earlier albums and so you know it's beautiful to be here celebrating a new thing and a new chapter but yeah i've been here a bunch of times and and have mad love for a uh, vocal for sure this is such an exciting time for you right now right there's a lot of really cool things going on i feel for people that don't know, you are a rapper and a librarian. Yeah. How do those two things happen? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's just been my life's work. And I'm really starting to see it kind of merge and come to fruition. Uh, when I was attaining my MLIS uh, 2017, I was taking a storytelling class and uh, I was playing around with the Ratbrarian and kind of like putting them together. And, uh, you know, I was questioning myself, like, is that corny? <laughs> is that corny? Is that cool? And, and uh, you know, the answer to me now, obviously, is that it's cool. But it was uh, these worlds that I was trying to kind of keep apart. Mm. I realized when I opened my eyes that they were informing one another. And I was always saying that it was the words, me being around stories was was uh, informing the storytelling. But I also kind of realized that being in libraries and being in these spaces kept me safe, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I was I was in a library space and that, that was keeping me off of uh, the streets. That was keeping me occupied. That was keeping me writing. I was bothering librarians for paper and pids and like <laughs> magazines, things like that. So, uh, I really, I really, really appreciate what a library can be. And then, you know, you get to the stories, you get to the possibilities of being able to escape in a book, to escape in words and language. And so I think being able to start the library, I'm really leaning into my work, my work as a librarian, my work as um, a community activist and an, and as an artist. I was going to say, I feel like growing up, everyone has that in them, right? When we're in elementary school, you love you like book trips or buying books. And then I feel like as you slowly get older, you kind of get away from the library and the magic yeah. that you love about the library. Um, so with Ratbury, could you tell us a little bit more about it? Sure. You know, because I love how you said you try to keep the two worlds separate. Yeah. And then sometimes it's just easier to create like this beautiful thing and fully be yourself right yeah i mean you gotta sometimes get out of your own way right a lot Mm. of times it's it's literally right in front of us um and i think what i what i kind of want to say not and i want to say it properly i want to articulate this properly i think coming up in a time when rap was extremely competitive during the blog era I had limited myself in a lot of ways of being, uh, you know, you want to kind of fit into what, what you other see people is are. popular, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've always been different. I've always, you know, embraced that uh, uniqueness as well. But I think that we still kind of wanted a street cred. We still want, you know, so I would necessarily, I wasn't necessarily talking about my scholarship. I wasn't necessarily talking about the fact that I've like loved learning from the beginning and that my head was in a book from the beginning, those were things that I kind of like left behind. But if anybody, you know, listens to a great rapper and a great storyteller, you can tell who re- you can tell who's reading. You can tell who, <laughs> you know. Um, and so I think when I began to kind of like embrace those things, 
it really just kind of like made more sense and more doors kind of like started opening again, had to kind of get out of, uh, get out of my own way and understand like what my strength and what my purpose was. And so when you ask about what Rat Brary is, uh, being a person that has been shaped by hip hop culture and by art, uh, you know, first of all, it's a gift to the community of hip hop and to the culture of hip hop because I want to preserve hip hop. I want people to understand and respect hip hop as a literary art form. So I want people to look at the storytellers, the rappers as authors, and I want to look at albums and explore albums as books. And so that's one of the ways that I think that we can preserve rap and hip hop as a culture. And then I want it to be a book sanctuary as well, where, you know, in the year of 2024, we've had 48 out of 50 states to try to challenge and ban books. Now in Illinois, uh, we have banned banning books right? Uh, so Alexi Janulia said, no, we're not doing that here. And if you do do that, you, your library will lose funding, thank God. But we're not banning banning books here. And, and uh, to the contrary, we are keeping them safe and accessible because, you know, our authors and our stories are important. And again, in this political season, right, where we're choosing a new leader for our nation, it's really important that we understand what our history and our legacy and our heritage was. And there are threats. There are people trying to tell us that the history that we know happened didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we need our storytellers to remain safe and we need our books to remain safe as well. So for the mission of, of Rat Brary, yeah. you know, that is so important and topical right now in 2024. Mm -hmm. Um, what kind of plans do you have for the future? It really seems like there's so many things that you could do with this, you know? What are some plans for the future? Like, I'm sure you have big dreams. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, if people didn't know, I've been a librarian for Chicago Public Libraries for uh, the past 12 or 13 years. I've been practically born and raised in libraries. And a lot of the... Uh, programming and, and events that I've spearheaded there, whether it be free yoga for the community or uh, a pride fest over the summer, um, you know, testing, just really just uh, so many different things as far as like getting the community together and serving the community and what the, the community needs. Uh, this December, I am planning to have our uh, Sorry We're Open house so it'll be the first I look. love that merch, by the way. I was <laughs> so, I told the team I saw that shirt and I was like, this is really cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Shout out to Yurio. That is uh, the person that has been designing a lot of, um, you know, he and I together. He does incredible brand identity. So, you know, shout out to, to Yurio. But, um, yeah, we're going to have an open house just to have people to kind of come in and, and, and see the space. Uh, eventually we want to be a, libra a, a library where people can come out. You know, we want to have a circulation system. People can check out items. We also want to be a bookseller. We want to do uh, book drives. So we're going to do a book drive this uh, winter. And, uh, you know, we'll see what is happening in the future. I have a long list of a lot of different ideas and things that we kind of want want to bring um you know one of the the main ones is being a production house right and 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 uh kind of mentoring younger storytellers uh to become better storytellers and to find out what their medium is and how they want to you know deliver their story how they want to know their story how literature can kind of help their story I, that's a thing that i've been always wanting to do even when i was and am still at the library doing uh rap writing workshops called the rap Brary and and book clubs uh so i want to continue all of that work that i've started with chicago public libraries in 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 rap Brary. and yeah please join our book club it's called the reading came first book club and uh um, oh my gosh i love that <laughs> yeah yeah it's called the reading came first book club and so our next meeting is actually this sunday uh, that is uh, some partners of mine are the Closet Unlocked and Nobody's Darling Bar in Andersonville, and so we've been doing some 
really incredible things. And we're, you know, going to continue to. You know, when I was trying to, like, find the line between rapper and librarian, because you've made so much great music. Of course, we have it here in our system. Um, so it does seem like you're doing a lot of things. But I was like, rapper, librarian, I guess in, in all, like, would you call yourself a storyteller? Is that what you really feel like your purpose is? Of course, yeah, in a lot of ways, right? Um, one of the more important parts, I believe, that, and why I'm so drawn to hip-hop uh, and love it so much and care for it so much is because there was a time when I really started looking and being a part of music when my parents would put, put on music for me, late 80s, early 90s, and, and even studying, you know, certain rappers and, and, and people of hip-hop like a Chuck D and Public Enemy, those were our first kind of like black intellectuals that were, were, were bridging the gap after the civil rights movement. In a time where we really, really needed to understand and have mentors and to have somebody speaking to the younger generation was important. You know, Chuck D would say, hip hop is the black man CNN. And, uh, and so it was kind of like, giving voice to the voiceless, empowering as well. And so uh, I kind of look at it in a lot of ways like like that. Like, all right, well, I'm going to kind of try to deliver not only these messages, but this wisdom. And so, you know, my next album is coming out, and it's called A Legacy Project. And I was really kind of thinking about what is the legacy that you want to leave? And when you aren't necessarily always kind of like leaving behind an inheritance or a trust, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Like, what is it that you can leave behind? And being, you know, somebody who is uh, a black man and and understanding that we've left down and passed down stories and lessons as oral storytelling, right? Like, that is that has always been our legacy. And so I'm continuing in that, right? I'm continuing in and uh, telling the cautionary tale um, and kind of trying to like plant those seeds that rappers have kind of like left for me. I learned a lot uh, from rap. I learned a lot of what not to do and what to do, you know, mm -hmm. from some of the songs that I kind of listen to. And so I would love for that to be part of my my legacy, along with then building a library. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say, I was actually, before you, you said that you're going to be releasing new music in an album soon, you know, seeing everything you've done, I was like, oh, like the rap is probably taking a back seat right now. Mm -hmm. But so everything right now is like at 100 with you, like, like oh your projects. God. Like, it seems like you are not like letting go of the gas at all. No. Nah. There's so many great media out there on you like so many articles and i was looking through all of them and a lot of them definitely highlight you as a queer you know rapper artist a black man mm -hmm. do you i mean it, it does seem like you know there's kind of this heavy role model like role on you do you mm. ever feel that way no never i never feel i never feel that way. And I think that there has been times where it's been challenging to kind of be in the public eye, uh, but I've always been pretty rebellious for my authenticity. And so um, there's a lot there, but I'm just kind of always really being myself and understanding what it is that I'm supposed to do. And I think that that's the thing that I learned in libraries is that, you know, we are whole people Right. We are whole people that and that contains a queerness or uh, an unapologetic sexuality that in, that that, uh, you know, you can be um, implored by uh, pleasure. Um, you can be literary. You can be, uh, you know, yourself. You can be into astrology. Right. Like that's what I love about that's what I love about being specifically in that space, because. I took a book here and added that to my personality and my identity. I took that, you know, another book and added that to my, it, it really is a practice in building and building yourself. And so, um, you know, if people look at and are inspired by anything that I'm doing, that is the point, right? Because ultimately we are libraries, right? 
I understand mm-hmm. that the work is larger than me. I understand that I'm here uh, to serve. And and that was something that I really, really understood during the shutdown, um, you know, during COVID. Mm. And it was in that time that I seen people return to their favorite films. They return to their favorite shows. They return to their favorite books. They return to their favorite albums. And I'm like, oh, okay. So now we agree that art is one of the most important things, right? that we should be investing in. We should be investing in artists. And as an artist, from an artist standpoint, I really, truly, truly understood that, oh, this is the time where people need a word. This is the time where people need, you know, for their, uh, you know, for some comfort for their humanity or some comfort through what we went through, right? So, um, yeah, I just truly understood my role as an artist and, and it was like, all right, you're here to you're here to serve. I know we made it look cute for so long is what you can get, <laughs> but now it's what it's what you can give. I love I love the authenticity. I can definitely feel it. I feel the vibe. <laughs> you know? And um I was, you know, looking you have the Chicago Public Awards. Yes, right? I do. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. be there with Chance, opening for Chance. Yeah, or? I'll be there opening opening for Chance. Chance is going to be getting an uh, an award along with uh and Patchett and another author, forgive me. But yeah, I'm honored, right? It's a really, it's a, that's a full circle moment in and of itself. Me being a person that started, uh, started working in U Media with Brother Mike and, uh, and uh, never really met Chance, but knew that really beautiful things were kind of coming out of there. And, and being a teaching artist back then, you know, it's a it's just a full circle moment that I get to perform right before he's you know getting his award. It's cool. That's so exciting. What time yeah. is that open to the public? Could can anyone pull up or? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. But it is so. It is. It is. Uh, Wednesday, October thirtieth at seven UIC Pavilion. Um. So, yeah, pull up. It's gonna be a good time. Yeah, you're gonna perform. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit, what whatever you can about this this new music coming out. Where, what kind of inspiration were you pulling from here? Mm-hmm. Uh, again, just kind of like leaning into. So the album is called A West Side Story, a legacy project, and I was really leaning into. You know, I've I've uh, my family grew up on the West Side. Uh, as, you know, when they came from Mississippi as part of the Great Migration. We grew up on the West Side as well. And then I worked serving uh, the West Side on Chicago Avenue and Kedzie at the Richard M. Daly branch uh, for the past 13, 14 years. And really kind of understanding and had, and I had a lot of questions. It's, it's kind of how I approach a lot of the art that I'm making is I'm either answering questions about myself or my surroundings. And uh, I was very curious about the lack of documentation on the west side and i felt like compared to other parts of the city i feel like the south side has a very rich documented history uh i feel like the north side does as well i was wondering what's up what's up with the with the west side and so i started uh doing some research as i do for my albums the rap brand <laughs> the rap brand <laughs> and um and I just kind of started, you know, looking into what happened and where did the disinvestment come from and when did that happen? And I really started thinking about Dr. King uh, d- during Dr. King's assassination and, and when people fled these these places uh, and kind of what what was left. And so that was part of it. And the other part was, again, trying to, like, leave a legacy. So more than my other records, I believe that this one is heavier in the storytelling and um, heavier in, I think, the message that I kind of want to want to leave behind um, and the questions that I kind of just wanted to ask. And so the song that I'll be premiering with you guys is called uh, West Side, and it just includes some some topics. Uh, you know, you'll hear it. But if you're just tuning in, we have Roy Kinsey in here with us. We're mm-hmm. talking all things Ratbury. We're talking about you performing at the Chicago Public Library Awards uh, and your new album coming up. 
and we want to get to this this new single. Uh, but first, tell everyone where they could find more information on Ratbury. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I know you have some events coming up in December, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, our website, theratbrary.com, R-A-P-B-R-A-R-Y.com. Uh, you can find out a lot of information there. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, at Ratbrary, uh, spelled the same way. And I'm, you know, constantly updating uh, those things. And, you know, we just have some really, really incredible things happening uh, next year, like a new album, as well as uh, a little book, a little a little book that I'm publishing. It's my first one, not the last, and it'll be a um, a collection of, some of my lyrics over the past uh, five or six years that that is like really important. It's called Dandelions, a legacy project. I love that because sometimes when you're listening to a great song, mm-hmm. you might not fully you not you might not be in the space to fully get the message. Yeah. So I kind of love the the afterthought of like here's exactly like what I was what I was saying that you might have missed because you were jamming out to the yeah. song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a project that I've been thinking about and working on for a really long time. But as a person that kind of like loves to see wor- the words on a page, uh, I thought it was something that was just kind of, you know, a natural evolution for myself, uh, my music and and, you know, everything I'm doing with the rap very being able to, you know, read these words. Let's go ahead and have you. Uh, we'll leave off with you introducing your this new single. Yeah, this is the first song off of the new album. The first single was called West Side from a West Side Story, a Legacy Project. Look in the mirror like God really played. Put on your crown because it's already paid. Put on your crown because it's already paid. Aim for your head, but I'm already stayed. Please let me enjoy the life that you gave. Like it's your life. Couldn't imagine being God that's your life. Still pray. No.